I'd like to welcome you back for the third visit to Fons Vitae. Uh, two years ago in February, actually, in the snow, we had an introductory piece introducing you to our offices and our personnel and our work, which is on the YouTube. And then last year we had a wonderful presentation in the summer of lots of our titles. And today I would like to give you updates on some of the things we've been doing, some of the things that have come out, and on some of the events and things we're participating in. So welcome to Fons Vitae for the third time. Welcome back to Fons Vitae. I'll try to give you a summary of some of the titles that are forthcoming, some that have just come out, and talk about some of our many projects of all sorts that you might be interested to hear about. When we lived in Cairo in the 70s, we were studying at Al-Azhar, there were three, I would say, giants, spiritual giants living there at that time. And they all, all three died in the late 70s. And so we have now, and the first volume is about to come out really in the next few weeks, we have uh, created a trilogy called Spiritual Luminaries of Cairo in the 20th century. And the first of these books uh, is about the great extraordinary being. He was the Imam of Al-Azhar Mosque, Sheikh Salih al-Jafri. And Sheikh Salih al-Jafri wrote an extraordinary thing on 40 of the uh, ahadith. And we've, we're also the author, Samir Dajani, has included his life and many things about him. As you can see, here's just a, a, a beautiful picture of Sheikh Salih al-Jafri. And he was renowned at the Azhar Mosque. He gave incredible lectures in the courtyard. And I think you will very much enjoy reading this first volume. The second volume will be um, the autobiography of the late Sheikh Abdul Halim Mahmoud. Sheikh Abdul Halim Mahmoud, Allah Yurhamu, was after being the head of the Majmal Booth al Islamiyah in Azhar, became the Sheikh al Islam, the Sheikh al Azhar. And what was one of the most extraordinary beings to behold. I think the reason we're bringing out this series is that those of us who lived in Cairo in the 70s want to be sure that the really great personages we were aware of and had the honor of, of meeting or being in their presences, that these great people aren't lost to future generations. The uh, autobiography of Sheikh Abdul Halim was called in Arabic, Hadhahi Hayati. Alhamdulillah, a life in the praise of God. And this is something we, we will all look forward to and benefit very much. This will be the second in the works to come. And the last will be the life and uh, teachings of Sheikh Hafiz Tijani, one of, the great, uh, one of the great teachers of the Tijaniya order who lived in Cairo at that time. And this work is called In the Footsteps of the Prophet. And it's being uh, compiled by um, several scholars, one of whom is Abdul Samad Yurizzi, uh, who lives in Italy. A work which has just come out um, in our line of Sufi books is A Mine of Meaning. This is done by Paul Jackson, who, as you know, has brought, uh, given us many other works of, uh, from the uh, Sufi tradition of India. And this is, The Mine of Meaning is from um, the teachings of Sharaf Adina Maneri. And I think you'll enjoy this very much. And this also, uh, also, I mentioned last time to you, but it hadn't come out. We have a Wayfarer's Guide to the Naqshbandi Way, Sufism. And this was, we have a wonderful um, translation by Mukhtar Holland and an introduction also by uh, uh, Abdul Hakim Winter. Also mentioned to you last time, but was not yet out, is this extraordinary, the Book of Ascension, uh, to the essential truths of Sufism, this uh, of Ibn Ajiba. This is an extraordinary lexicon of Sufic terminology done by one of the great saints of Morocco. This is a very important work. And then uh, also, finally, it came out this wonderful word, listen. This is a, a commentary on the couplets of Rumi. And this was brought out by the group of the Kinan, Kinan Rafai in Turkey. Most of our works uh, on Rumi are actually uh, done by non-Turks. So this is a, a really great work which has just come out. And also in the line of Rumi, coming up shortly, we have uh, Camille Helminski is doing for us a book called uh, Friends of Rumi. A very exciting work in our Spiritual Affinity series is actually in the press right now. So 
really in a month from now, that'll be um, oh, March of uh, 2013, you will be able to read Where the Two Seas Meet. And this is an extraordinary work, and it is the story of where Al-Hijr and Moses, the Quranic story of their meeting in Sufi commentaries as a model for spiritual guidance. It, it examines how three medieval Sufi Quran commentators explain the story of Moses' journey with Al-Hijr and conveys various teachings about the path of Sufism and the nature of spiritual authority. Uh, these commentaries translated for the first time discuss essential themes of Sufism as written by practicing Sufi masters. Also in the um, realm of spiritual affinities, a work which we've been, which, which we've had translated out of the French, it's a work by Ibn Arabi on the nature of Jesus in the Quran. And this to have an understanding of Jesus from that perspective, from the level of such as Ibn Arabi is going to be quite something. We translated it out of a French edition and now it's in the final stages of editing and we expect to start typesetting this very soon. Along, um, along these lines, a, a foundational text that we men I mentioned to you last time is now, I, uh, this is a work called Medieval Literacy. And this is foundational because what this work does is it collects all the terminology that's used in the Middle Ages at every level of literature, art, theology, and puts it into kind of a lexicon where you can look up a term like the great chain of being and actually understand it. It's the first of its kind. Normally people have had to go from book to book to book to get an, an understanding and a picture, and it's replete with diagrams. I think you'll enjoy this one very much. And also in our, our Merton series, as you know, we, we had brought out last year the wonderful book of, um, called A Silent Action, done for us by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams. And this is quite extraordinary, quite a, quite a jewel, this book. And along those lines, we also have from Brother Paul Quainon, Merton's novice at the Abbey of Gethsemane, his wonderful work called Monk's Wear, in which we have not only his really delightful and hilarious often poetry, but beautiful photographs of the habits and things that monks wear. And Paul has just finished another book which we've published, which is called Monk Script Two. That is now out. Monk Script Two includes very interesting writings which really open up the inner life of the monastery, but it includes even an essay, a wonderful essay by Coleman Barks. I'm sure you all have been following our Merton series, Merton and Sufism, Buddhism, Hesychasm, Judaism, and the Merton and the Tao is nearly ready. Uh, it's uh, getting the, the index put in now. And so I expect here in Louisville in 2013, keep your eyes peeled, we'll have a Congress on Merton and the Tao, which ought to be um, great fun for everyone. I'm sure all of you have been following with great excitement our, our, the great Tafsir series. We have two that are about to be added on to. This is the Tustari, which came out last year. And, that, and the Tustari joined the Jalalain in the Ibn Abbas and the Nazul. And the, so we have four of the series that we're doing in conjunction with the Ahl al-Bayt Foundation in Jordan. Nearly ready for publication is the first half of the Kashani, as well as a selection from al Kushairi. The Tabri is in the last stages of review and the introduction underway. Fons Vita has done also on its own, it's done two other um, tafsir. Last time I talked to you, the spiritual gems. This is Jafar Asadak. This is an enormously important work and this came out, um, this came out in the past year. Joining our, the immense ocean, which is uh, a really the Bahra Madid, it's a, a tafsir of uh, Ahmed ibn Ajiba, which gives both the literal and the inner meaning of three of the different surahs of the Quran. Ali Guma is the Grand Mufti of Egypt today, and he has come out with a book, which we've had translated from the Arabic into English, called Responding from the Tradition, 100 Contemporary Fatwas. This is an important work, which will bring to the West a deeper understanding 
of how a, a juristic opinion is ma made on various subjects that occur in modern day life. Uh, John Esposito, who is a professor at Georgetown, has said, Ali Goma has merged as one of the most influential Muslim scholars in the world today. This work provides a substantial representation of how he interprets Islam in the face of old and new challenges. It will be an indispensable resource for any student of modern Islamic piety, theology, and law. I think uh, so many people have the wrong opinion about Islamic law that a work such as this, which shows how issues that uh, emerge today can be treated in a fresh and profound way would be of great interest to anyone. Really one of the finest books that Franz Vita has been honored to present is The Spiritual Teachings of the Prophet, Hadith with Commentaries by the Saints and Sages of Islam. Here we have an, ex uh, an extraordinary collection of ahadith which are spiritual in Arabic with the English translation underneath. And beneath that, instead of having commentaries by modern day people, instead we have the commentaries and explication by some of the greatest saints, sages, and scholars of the Islamic world from Junaid, Al-Ghazali, you name it. It's extraordinary. We sent a copy of this uh, manuscript to Hamza Yusuf. He was in Medina and quite ill. And he, he, he writes, I was sent a copy of this book by computer in Medina. I happened to be sick and un unable to leave my room. I could not stop reading it. By the time I was finished, I was well again. It's a wonderful book with beautiful insights into the spiritual secret of our beloved's words. Imam al-Haddad said that the reason Imam al-Ghazali, toward the end of his life, read only the Quran and Hadith, is that his station was so high and his state so elevated that by then only direct revelation could nourish his soul. This book is a feast with wonderful explanations of the ingredients of the soul nourishing hadith and their benefits for one's spiritual health. Now, I know everybody's been waiting for a portrait of the prophet as seen by his contemporaries, and every year we put you off again. <laughs> this has really become very difficult, but it's all for the good. We have spent so much time trying to make an extraordinary critical edition uh, out of this very important work. And she I met uh, just a few months ago with Sheikh Ninawi, who has in, found, in fact found first in the uh, Escorial one of the oldest extant versions, tr and then he traced it all the way to, uh, to the top copy and was able to photograph that, that old, old of manuscripts. And pieces of that will be shown, will be also in this, um, in this work. We are at the stage now where the glossary is being done. So don't give up hope. <laughs>
many wonderful things. And then it also has uh, a teacher's training manual in the back. And this is done by um, Mrs. Yahya Rodas. Um, the the five-year-old, we finished, we've done 40 stories for five-year-olds, 40 stories with pictures which illustrate every idea in the Kitab al-Ilm. This was, this took two years to do, just so you know. Um, what I'm hoping is that the Kitab al-Ilm and the Kitab al-Aqida, they are such profound, the subject matter is so profound and so difficult to take al-Ghazali and bring it to the level at which you can speak to a six-year-old and have them understand it. And by the way, it works. But I mean, um, I'm expecting the next book, which will include uh, uh, purity, prayer, uh, you know, fasting, the ibadat. I'm expecting that will not be as, as difficult as these first two. But who knows? Here is the, here is the workbook for um, the Book of Belief. And my grandchildren have already been working in this. And I've been, trying, I've been trying this out. I've been taking this to groups of children. I've been reading them the stories, telling them the stories. They've been illustrating it using the workbooks. And I'm delighted to report it's, it's amazing. Children actually have the absolute potential for understanding all of these ideas. They want to know, and they do understand. And I've now found that I almost prefer to be ch with children than adults because they are, they're such good people. And so this project is moving along. Anyone out there who knows of some illustrators who'd like to contribute, I'd be delighted to see their work. In the, by the time we've done 40 books, I want them to have different types of illustrators because it would be boring if it were always the same thing. So I'm really asking you out there who will benefit from this project. Um, to, um, to, to give us a hand. And also shortly we'll put on our website um, um, some footage of my giving some lessons to some children in Cairo, whereby you can see the method and you can see some of the artwork that the children are doing. A long time in the making is a DVD called Kentucky's Treasure of Diversity, Faith in the Family. Um, we here in Kentucky have, make, have a huge interfaith effort going, and the various religious communities in Louisville are noted for their cooperation and their work and their admiration of one another. This particular DVD um, involves what each tradition has to say about it's Holy Day, what it does on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a description of, its, of the services told by the people you experience the services. It also goes on to include um, uh, what kind of grace is said at home over meals by, in each of the traditions. And we've really enjoyed um, making this and having everyone in this community participate to be able to go into other people's services and to see what really is being said and done, to be able to be present at table and to hear the grace that is said is really very profound. I just wanted to let you know that right now, this year, 2000 and end of 12 and 13, Fons Vita is working very hard, uh, also preparing an interfaith um, event for the annual Festival of Faiths. Every year here in Kentucky, usually in November, we have a theme which is addressed at many, many levels by all the different traditions. For example, one year we did the theme of death, and we did uh, how each tradition views the death of the body, how each tradition deals with the death of the lower self. We also talked about death in the environment. There's usually a huge environmental component. When we've done the four different elements. We've done water, earth, air. We finished fire this year. And these are a great way of bringing our community together. This year, we have coming uh, May 19th through 21st, the Dalai Lama to speak in Louisville. So we've moved uh, this year's Festival of Faith to the week before that. And this year, the theme is Sacred Silence. 
and we have invited scholars from all the different traditions to speak on sacred silence and compassion, and then to also be, as it were, on stage with the Dalai Lama. Uh, we have coming from um, we have coming from Buddhism, Matthew Ricard, from Islam, Sayyid Hussein Nasser. We have um, we have Arthur Green, who is a great specialist on Jewish spirituality. We have um, uh, Richard Rohr, one of the great Catholic speakers, uh, a Franciscan who lives in Albuquerque and whose lectures are amazing. Also, we're inviting from India, uh, Swami Atma, as well as uh, a woman, Swami DDG, and many, many others will be here. And we will be addressing the issue uh, on the 18th, uh, Saturday the 18th of May, of from, from where in a person does compassion arise? I mean, we can say that compassion does not come from the lower egoic separative nature, nor does it arise from, uh, from yes, it doesn't arise from that part of ourselves, but it comes from what has been called variously by the different traditions you know, the kingdom of heaven within, the Buddha nature, the self, Adama, the Fitra, so on. And so what we're going to be doing is on the 18th, having our various uh, professors and scholars of world religion discuss the practices used in each tradition to strengthen that part of ourselves from which compassion arises, to help identify or let's say abide in that part of ourselves. And so these particular scholars, the next day, and I hope you will come to Louisville, will be on stage with the Dalai Lama, and each of them will make a summary also of what he has said in the, in the days preceding. And then another thing Franz Vitae is being involved in right now, which supports this great effort. Um, as we all know, the Dalai Lama speaks about compassion and asks people to practice loving kindness and compassion, which is basic to every faith tradition of the world. But what sometimes happens is people leave, leave a talk and they just go back to daily life with nothing concrete to do. So Fons Vita has been working for now six or seven months with our mayor here in Louisville, Mary, Mayor Greg Fisher, to produce something called the Compassionate Checklist. And this is one of the biggest things we've ever taken on for two reasons. One, what we are printing is a large 8 by 10 booklet, which will be given out in Louisville in April at our Give a Day. Give a Day is we ha had last year 90,000 volunteers who all come together and address the needs of our community. But often, people don't know what the exact needs of our community are about. So we have gotten in touch with all of the nonprofit organizations, and I assure you there are hundreds, and each have written in their concrete volunteer needs. I mean, one institution, Bridgehaven, for example, needs someone to come Mondays from two to four to teach art to these people who have been in mental institutions and now they're in kind of a halfway house preparing to resume normal life. But they also need a handyman once a month and they need someone to come and do the gardening. So what we've done is, because everyone has different aptitudes, we have tried to break up all the needs of our entire community into categories, whether it's caring for animals, welcoming our refugees, uh, cherishing our elderly. I mean, the list is, we've got about 19 categories. And so at this moment, every organization is sending in their needs and we're putting them in the different categories so that people can easily go to a page that interests them. Perhaps you just like the out of doors, want to plant trees, want to collect, collect trash, you know, in the parks, whatever it is. But the major part of this checklist is we are now dealing with our entire school system, the, the public school system, all our independent and religious schools. We're talking about hundreds of schools. We've been working with them since September to create a compassionate school system. And we are asking each school to have its students practice, um, write about, talk about, and practice ways of addressing um, issues which really require compassion. I've been going to schools now for the past few weeks. What we try to do is 
we've identified children really are miserable when they're left out or excluded or teased or bullied. So what we're doing is we're taking groups of children and we will have two go over here and this one will tease or bully that one. And then we will say, and what will the class do? And then someone will come and join and say, no, no, that's not a nice thing to do. You, you come with me, you come and join part of the group. And the same thing with, with being left out. We have students stand and try to approach a group, then they're, they're rejected, then the group suddenly realizes, no, we want to join them. And so what we're doing is we're also creating in this checklist a place where the entire school system is, is presenting what they are doing to act compassionately among one another. And on the 21st, the day the Dalai Lama leaves, he will meet with 15 representatives from every school to discuss their extraordinary efforts toward compassion. And this will be simulcast among our schools so that our children may take advantage of this wonderful historic visit. Thank you very much.